In this episode, we're going to talk about America's favorite vegetable, at least to grow in their garden, and that's the tomato. Tomatoes are going to have to be planted after the last frost. They do not tolerate frost, and they really like warm soil and air temperatures. The tomato is gardener's favorite vegetable to grow for several reasons. First off, they're just downright good to eat. They go with many different things in many different ways. There are literally hundreds of different varieties of tomatoes. There's yellow ones, there's red ones, and everything in between. It's great to can tomatoes and use them all year long. One thing to really remember about tomatoes is they're going to use a lot of water. Tomatoes need to be watered deep, and they need to be watered pretty often, more often than most other things. And in many places in Wyoming, in order to get a tomato, you're going to have to either start the seed inside or buy pretty big bedding plants when you, when you go to plant your garden. When we uh, talk about how productive the tomato is, you can see here these tomato plants have cages around them. Um, these tomatoes are going to grow up and these, these cages are going to support them because there's going to be hopefully so many tomatoes on there that will need that support. Of course in my family it just hasn't been summer until we pick a, pick a tomato off the vine warm eat it like an apple with a little bit of juice running down our face. This is Hudson Hill with the University of Wyoming Extension. You're watching From the Ground Up. World Record Tomatoes. I'm reading from a web page, home.comcast.net forward slash tilde Hobrian 48 slash tomatoes underscore world underscore record dot htm. Charles Wilbur set a Guinness World Record with his giant tomato plant. Could you be next? If you're like most American vegetable gardeners, 85% of whom grow tomatoes, according to the National Garden Association, You'll soon be trying to figure out what to do with all the tomatoes ripening on your windowsill in bowls on the countertop and on the vine in your backyard. Salads will be more than red and green. Your neighbors will grit their teeth as you bestow yet another basketful upon them, and you'll run out of jars from all the sauce simmering on your stove. Imagine then how Crane Hill, Alabama gardener Charles H. Wilbur must feel, eating, selling, and giving away the harvest from his plants, each of which produces an average of 342 pounds of tomatoes. The California Tomato Growers Association estimates that commercial growers harvest roughly 8 to 10 pounds of tomatoes from each plant. Mr. Wilbur gets between 30 to 40 times as much from his. Does he use a secret lab's high-tech supergrowth fertilizer? Hardly. Mr. Wilbur's methods are all organic. Does he plant a rare type of seed? Nope. His best yield, 1,368 pounds of tomatoes from four plants, for which he earned one of three Guinness Book of World Records, came from the widely known Better Boy variety. So how do you get tons of delicious organic tomatoes with common varieties and best of all, avoid weeding and hoeing altogether? Just pay attention. In order to become a three-time Guinness World Record Champion, it helps to set your sights high, say 275 feet. When Mr. Wilbur visited California Sequoia National Park, he stared at the giant tree known as General Sherman for a long time. You see very readily that what nature provides is very simple, he says, and it was all right there. The obvious elements including air, rain, fallen leaves and limbs, weeds, grass, and no weeding or hoeing. Mr. Wilbur decided then and there to try to replicate nature's system and unlock such growth potential in his own plants. The tomato was his favorite vegetable, so he concentrated his research on the red beauties and soon set himself a goal of growing a low foot-tall plant bearing tomatoes from top to bottom. Mr. Wilbur named his first giant General Sherman. In the years that followed, Charles Wilbur netted three Guinness records, the tallest okra up to that time, 17 feet, 6 and 1 quarter inches. The greatest average yield from tomato plants, 342 pounds per plant and the tallest tomato plant for a 28 foot 7 inch tall cherry tomato a record that still stands 
I'm through with breaking records, says the 85-year-old grower, who now uses his expertise to help commercial growers improve their yields. I'd like to help someone else break one now. There's a photo of two trees, but they're actually tomato plants, and Mr. Wilbur is standing on a tall ladder, and the caption says, Pruning these tall 342-pounders presents special challenges, but Charles Wilbur rises to the occasion. The most important thing is to prevent stress. Charles Wilbur says of growing tomato plants, It's just like with a person. The more stress you get, the worse shape you're in. Pests, diseases, or improper nourishment or moisture will limit growth. To reduce stress, you monitor your plants and their surroundings. Inspect seeds and seedlings before planting. Watch for bugs. Squeeze the soil to check the moisture content. In addition, Mr. Wilbur gave us these pointers. Number one, good seeds. Wafer-thin seeds are a recipe for disaster. Look for plump, rounded seeds of an indeterminate variety, which bear no gene-driven growth limits. He prefers a disease-resistant hybrid like Better Boy, VFN. Number two, good plants. Mr. Wilbur recommends a plant six inches tall with a good solid base at least one sixteenth inch in diameter at the soil line. When you set your plants, pinch off all the leaf stems except for the top pair. Number three, food and water. Plant a green manure of rye or hairy vetch in the fall and till it into the soil a month before setting the plants in the spring. Start a compost heap the previous season as well. Shredded kudzu is a key ingredient in Mr. Wilbur's remarkable recipe. Apply the compost in a ratio of one part compost to three parts soil. When watering plants, use rain or pond water, not treated town water, which Mr. Wilbur believes can kill beneficial soil microbes. Water the plants every morning. Number four, control diseases and insects. Treat the garden like an operating theater. For instance, wash your hands with antibacterial soap and prohibit smoking. When possible, water and soil should not touch leaves so as to prevent soil-borne and fungal diseases. Cover bare soil with mulch. For insects, three and a half inches tall cardboard collars protect young plants from cutworms. Austrian peas planted at the garden's perimeter distract aphids while attracting more than enough ladybugs to patrol both the peas and the tomatoes. The best defense against tomato worms is persuading birds to hang around your garden. In other words, feed them. Number five, the magic number is 18 branches. For the optimum yield, six lower suckers are allowed to grow and split once, 12 branches while two upper suckers are each allowed to split into three, six or more branches. Pinch off unwanted suckers twice a week. Train the vines up a circular cage made from concrete reinforcing mesh with six inch squares, five feet tall with 18 vertical wires, one for each branch. Stake cages to the ground using concrete reinforcing bars. Additional cages can be added to the top as the plant outgrows each one. Mr. Wilbur had to stack six cages for his record-breaking cherry tomato. Next image, tomatoes grow well in barrels using Mr. Wilbur's methods, but stresses like cramped roots generally limit the plant's yield to 100 pounds or less per vine. Never weed again. Strawberry mulch is one of the most important components of Charles Wilbur's process. It shuts out weeds, keeps the soil underneath cool and moist, and most important, alleviates the need for hoeing, which can destroy the root system. Here's how Mr. Wilbur sets about mulching. 1. Visualize the area as a tic-tac-toe board with the center square left open. 2. Lay down large squares of wheat straw, each layer a few inches thick and about a foot square just as it peels off the bale in the imaginary board's outer spaces. Three, push the blocks tight together so that weeds cannot infiltrate along the seams. 
Four, set tomato plants in the center square and cover that soil with finely chopped hay mulch about half an inch deep. Some people may think that Mr. Wilbur's process requires too much effort. Mr. Wilbur says that aside from the compost and the green manure, preparing the sites as he's described takes only about six hours. The rest of the season's work includes mere watering and pruning. So the next time you're pulling weeds in the hot summer sun, consider the double benefits of following Charles Wilbur's wise counsel, a bountiful harvest, and less backache. Thank you.